is about how to solve exponential equations. Yesterday you did logarithmic, today we're doing the inverse, the exponentials. So there's different varieties of problems you're going to encounter, okay? You find where, is, where the x is in the equation. That determines how to solve. If x is in the exponent, bring, the, bring in the logarithm on both sides of the equations because remember the power rule will move that to the front. So if I do this, I have to take the logarithm of both sides. So logarithm of x, 5 to the x equals logarithm of 18. Okay? And then um, remember the power rule will move that x to the front. So I have x times the log of 5 equals the log of 18. Now I need to isolate x, so I divide by the log of 5. Don't just divide by 5. You have to divide by the logarithm of 5. These will cancel. And you'll actually type this in your calculator, log of 18 divided by the log of 5. The reason this works is because the bases are the same. Remember the base is 10, it's the common log, and this, this will work for you. So you type it in your calculator, log of 18 over the log of 5, and you should get 1.80. Okay, so rounding to two decimals. Look at number 2. X is in the exponent, so I need to take the logarithm of both sides. So the logarithm of 3 raised to the 2x minus 1 power equals the logarithm of 3.96. Power rule is going to move this guy out. The logarithm of 3. Okay, so I'm going to divide by the logarithm of 3 first. And what's left over here on the left is the 2x minus 1. So I plug this in the calculator, logarithm 3.96 divided by the logarithm of 3, and I get a value of 1.25. Algebraically, I next need to solve, add 1. So I have 2x equals 2.25 divided by 2, and then x will be 1.13. So it's a lot of algebra. You just need to remember the basic properties of logarithms. Remember, this is how you solve it if x is in the exponent, okay? What if x is in the base? What do you do? Well, if x is in the base, then you're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power, okay? Raise it to the reciprocal power. So here on number 3, x to the 6th equals 96. Well, I need to raise both sides of my equation to the 1 6th power, the reciprocal of 6. Why do we do that? Well, we do that because, remember, when you raise a power to a power, we multiply the powers. So I end up with 6 over 6, which is 1. And now I have 96 to the 1 sixth power. Now, that is, you can type that in your calculator. Remember, that's like the sixth root of 96. Now, don't worry about typing this in your calculator. You can type the exponent as a fraction. So type in 96, little caret, and write this as a fraction. All right? When you do that, you will get... 2.14. All right, okay, number four. What if x is in the exponent? Well, at first glance, this is not in the exponent, but it's a logarithm, so I need to swirl it, right? So I get x to the 6.3 power equals 47. Okay, now we're back to what we said. We've got to take the logarithm of both sides. So on number four, I'm going to, uh, first thing I need to do is get rid of the logarithm by swirling. So I get x raised to 6.3 power equals 47. Now, we said to multiply by the reciprocal of 6.3. Now, we are not going to mix decimals and fractions, so we're going to convert our decimal to a fraction. Now, remember what this is. This is 6 and 3 tenths, right? So if I... Um, 3 tenths, it would be 63 tenths. So I'm just going to move it over. If you know this is 3 tenths, then that's your denominator, tenths. So 63 tenths is your fraction. So x to the 63 tenths, okay, I've got to multiply by its reciprocal, so 10 60 thirds equals 47 raised to the 10 60 thirds power. On the left, this cancels, and it's just x to the first power, which is my goal. On the right, I, I plug this in the calculator, 47 to the 10 63rds power. And when you do that, you get 1.84.
Okay? If you need to look back at number three, just rewind the video just a smidge. It'll be there. Now the third type of problem is what dealing with the volume of a sphere. That's knowing this equation right here. Okay, I'll give you this equation. You just know how to need to know how to utilize it. So volume is four thirds pi r cubed. So the problems will give you the volume, and you have to undo it and find the radius. So like on number five, I'm going to set the 12 equal to four thirds pi r cubed. All right. So the first thing I would want to do is multiply. Um, isolate this R, okay? So what I'm going to do is um, multiply both sides by the reciprocal of all of this, okay? This is like 4 pi over 3, so I'm going to multiply it by 3 over 4 pi, okay? When I do that, this, I'm going to do it to both sides. Over here, this, this will cancel and I'm left on the right side with r cubed. All right. Over here, <clears throat> I'm going to get uh, plug this in my calculator. Okay, I'm going to get a <clears throat> if you multiply it, you get 36 over 4 pi, which is 9 divided by pi. So when I plug all that in, I'm going to get 2.86 in my calculator. Okay. <clears throat> so I need to get to the cube root of this. So remember, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal power. So multiply or raise it to the reciprocal power. I'm sorry, one third power. So on the left, I need to raise that to the one third power. So R is the cube root of 2.86. So when I put that in my calculator, I get 1.42. Just remember this was meters, so I need to label my unit as meters. Okay. Let's try another one of these volumes. So I set 14 equal to 4 pi over 3 times r cubed. All right. So the first thing I want to do is multiply by the reciprocal fraction here. Right, that will take care of this fraction and leave me with r cubed on the right side of my equation. On the left side, all right, plug this in your calculator. When you do, if you do it correctly, you should end up with 3.34. Now we said to get rid of this power here, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal or raise to the reciprocal exponent. So this is 3 over 1, I raise it to the 1 over 3 power or the cube root power. So r will equal, when I type this in my calculator, the cube root of 3.34 is 1.5. And remember your, your unit is inches. Okay. So we're taking, you're going starting with the volume and working backwards to find our radius. Okay. Okay, I want you to try this one. If you don't have a fancy calculator, that's okay. You can do the best you can and when you get to class you can use one of mine. Good luck and see you in class.